Hi, welcome to this next lecture of Ratio Analysis for Beginners. This lecture is about the ratio day sales in receivables. So what is the day sales in receivables ratio? Here's a quick introduction. It's an efficiency ratio used for collections and credit management. It tells us how long it takes, on average, to turn an accounts receivable balance into cash. So how long it takes to turn our accounts receivable, collect the cash and bank it. This can assist with cash flow planning and can be an indicator of success of the collections department. So here's the formula. And the first thing I want to mention is that there are two very popular formulas for the day of sales and receivables ratio. Now, if you see there that the sales revenue divided by 365 is within this formula, you'll often find that there another formula that refers to net credit sales divided by 365. So they use net credit sales as opposed to sales revenue. The reason I've chosen to use sales revenue and not net credit sales is that if you wanted to use net credit sales, you would have to be internal to the company. You would have to know the credit policy of the company and know the proportion of credit sales versus cash sales. So this more generalized formula using sales revenue instead allows us to be external to the company and simply use the financial statements to calculate the result. It may not be as accurate because not all sales revenue goes into accounts receivable, but it has much more utility for financial statement analysis unless you're internal to the company and know the specific credit policy and proportion of credit to cash sales. So here's the formula. I'm going to keep the formula up on the screen throughout the whole lecture, down in the bottom left-hand corner, so you don't have to write it down immediately. But generally, you take accounts receivable at the start of the period and add this to accounts receivable at the end of the period divide that by two. So essentially what you're doing is finding an average accounts receivable balance. And with that average accounts receivable balance, you divide that figure by sales revenue divided by 365. So we'll keep that on the screen. So where do we find the data inputs? Well, accounts receivable at the start of the period is found from last period's balance sheet. So that's not the current balance sheet, but that's last period's balance sheet, and that'll give you at the start of the period. Accounts receivable at the end of the period, well, this time you do use the current balance sheet, this period's balance sheet. And sales revenue, you'll find that in this period's income statement. So the result. The result is expressed in days. So for instance, if you calculate a result of 42.3, that's 42.3 days. And that means on average, it takes 42.3 days to turn your accounts receivable into cash. So you make a sale on January 1st, goes into the accounts receivable balance, 42.3 days later, on average, you collect that accounts receivable balance and bank it in your business bank account. So what's a good or a bad result for this ratio? Well, this is one of these ratios where there is no ideal result. The result is based on particular businesses' credit policy or the collections, the collections department success and even business conditions. And the unique mix of these factors can mean that any result's interpretation is subjective. For instance, company A could have 32.4 days and company B could have 45.7 days and neither result in isolation, and I stress in isolation, could be better or worse than the other. So you would need to look at other factors to, to determine whether this is a good or a bad result. So when ratio analysis is about asking better questions and seeking further insight, what are three possible areas for analysis based on our day sales and receivables result? Or for instance, we could have a look about what is the company's credit policy? Has the credit policy changed? Does this particular credit policy affect sales revenue? This is based on the idea that if you loosen the company credit policy and perhaps change payment terms from 30 days net to 60 days net, 
then you should see a boost in sales revenue and this will allow more customers to purchase on more favorable credit terms. So you can have a, have a look at the link there. Or you could ask how successful was the collections department? Did something change in that particular department? And has this change affected repeat sales or the bad debts allowance? For instance, in theory, we always want the collections department to be collecting the cash as soon as possible. But if they're too pushy or harass good customers, then, they, then this may affect repeat sales. People might not want to buy from us if we hassle them every single day for the next 10 days just to get a figure of 10 days in day, in day sales and receivables. Further, we can look at the bad debts allowance. Has the collections department reduced our bad debts allowance and that's something else you can look at further will there be any external factors are the business clients powerful for instance if you're a small business and your clients are much larger businesses and much more powerful then they may dictate the payment terms you may ask for 30 days net terms but they may pay 50 days or 60 days later after all, when they're more powerful and you can't afford to give up this particular client, they're the ones really setting the agenda when it comes to payment terms. Or you could ask, what is the state of general business conditions or the economy? In a weak or slowing economy with weaker business conditions, you may find that many businesses have difficulty paying their bills or at least delaying payments themselves. And the weak business conditions may stretch out the day sales and receivables through no action of the internal company. Note, these are just three questions that I've come up with. There could be a wide variety more, and this list isn't meant to be exhaustive. But that's up to your own analysis. Thanks very much for your time. That's the day sales and receivables ratio.